Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts 2023 specimen paper 2 question number 2. So there are a few changes in paper 2 from examination for 2023 onwards. Previously, we used to have 4 questions, 2 of 30 marks and 2 of 15 marks, and we were given a time limit of 1 hour and 30 minutes. But in this case, we are given 4 questions, again of the same weightage, so we have 2 questions of 30 marks and 2 questions of 15 marks. But now we have a time limit of 1 hour and 45 minutes, which means that we will be getting extra 15 minutes for the total paper. And since question number 2 is of 15 marks, according to the weightage, we should be ideally spending 17 and a half minutes in question number two so in this video we will be attempting to solve this question under 17 and a half minutes now without any further delay let's get started sergio is a sole trader his bookkeeper prepares regular bank reconciliation statements for the first part we need to state two benefits of preparing regular bank reconciliation statements so the very first benefit of preparing regular bank reconciliation statement would be that errors in the cash book will be discovered earlier and can be corrected easily because we check the balance for our bank statement and our cash book and those balance should be equal and if it is not we can find the errors in either the cash book or made by the bank in our bank statement so let's write it down errors in cash book will be discovered earlier and can be corrected like i said before we check the balance in our bank statement as well as the balance in cash book so our next error that we can identify is the errors made by the bank in the bank statement right and we can communicate the error to them so that they can uh, prepare the correct bank statement let's write it down errors made by the bank will be discovered earlier and can be communicated to them. Let's move towards the second part. We are given additional information. Sergio is preparing his financial statements to 31st May 2020. His bank statement shows the following for the first week of June 2020. Okay, right after May, there is June, right? And we can see here that the balance at the ending date of May, which is 31st May, is 12,350, but on the debit side. And remember that this is uh, Sergio's bank statement. So whatever amount that we have on the debit side represent all of our outflows and whatever amount we have on the credit side represents all of the inflows so since we have the balance on the debit side it represents all of our outflows which means that there are greater outflows than the inflows in our bank account so our bank balance is going to be in a negative amount which means that our bank balance is in overdraft okay then we are also given additional information, but let's have a look at the question first. We need to prepare Sergio's bank reconciliation statement at 31st May 2020 to show the balance in the cash book before it is updated. So in order to prepare his bank reconciliation statement at the date of 31st May 2020, we will be starting with the balance as per our bank statement at the date of 31st May 2020. Let's do it. We are going to write down the heading, which is bank reconciliation statement. Okay, and then, like I said before, we will be starting with the balance as per the bank statement. So that's balance per bank statement, which was given above. So let's have a look. Uh, we were given the debit balance of 12,350 and we already concluded that debit balance represents a negative amount. So we're going to write this amount of 12,350, but in a bracket in order to represent the negative factor. Let's write it down. That's going to be 12,350 in a bracket. Now we need to show the balance in our cash book before it is updated. Let's have a look at the additional information given. The deposits on 1st June and 2nd June both relate to amounts received 
and recorded by Sergio in his cash book for the month of May. Let's have a look at our deposits made on 1st June and 2nd June. So we can see 1st June right here and 2nd June right here. So the amount deposited on 1st and 2nd June was 1,211 and 2,170 respectively. And these were deposited in the bank at the date of 1st June and 2nd June. But uh, the amount had already been received and recorded by Sergio in his cash book for the month of May. Right. And we are trying to figure out the cash balance. Uh, at the end of May, which means that it should also include the amount that had been deposited on 1st June and 2nd June, right? So we should add these amounts of 1,211 and 2,170 in our bank reconciliation statement. Let's do that. And these are the outstanding bankings. These are the amounts that uh, have not yet been banked as per our cash book. So let's write it down. Outstanding bankings. And these are of two dates. So the first one is for 1st June and 2nd June. And for 1st June, the amount is 1,211. And the amount for 2nd June is 2,170. Let's figure out the total by adding these two amounts. That's 1,211 plus 2,170, which results in 3,381. This amount should be added in order to figure out the cash book balance, right? Now, let's have a look at the second information. The last check that Sergio issued in May 2020 was number uh, 1683. Let's have a look. So, 1683 uh, is issued at the date of 3rd June according to our bank statement. But we are told that Sergio has already issued uh, check number 1683 in May 2020, right? Which means that these have already been paid uh, according to our cash book. So those should be subtracted in order to figure out the cash book balance, right? And if he used uh, the check number 1683 in the month of May, he also used check numbers lower than this in the month of May itself, right? So that includes 1681 and 1682 as well. So these three checks had already been paid in the month of May according to our cash book. So we need to subtract this in order to figure out the cash book balance at the end of the month of May. That's 527, 361, and 1260. Let's subtract this in our bank reconciliation statement. And we can write it under the heading of unpresented checks because uh, those have already been paid in our cash book but not yet been presented in our bank statement. Let's write it down. Unpresented checks and the check numbers were 1681 1682 1683 now let's have a look at the amounts that's 527 361 and 1260 let's write it down 527 361 and 1260 like i said before these three amounts should be subtracted Right. Let's figure out the total first. That will be 527 plus 361 plus 1260, which results in 2148. But since we need to subtract it, I'm just going to write it down in a bracket. Let's have a look at another information now. The adjustment on 4 June 2020 related to a standing order debited by the bank in error on 27 May 2020. Let's have a look at the amount. We are talking about 4 June. This is standing order adjustment of 225 on the credit side, right? And this is the adjustment made due to an error in recording. And we already know that whatever amount that is on the credit side represents our inflows, right? And this is the error made on 27 May 2020 in our bank statement. But um, we cannot say the same for our cash book, right? So we should be recording this amount properly in our cash book since we know that this is an inflow we should uh, add it in our cash book balance. So let's do that. We can write it as correction of the bank error. And we are adding the amount of 225 because this was only the error made in our bank statement, which was adjusted at a later date. But if we're talking about the cash book, no error was made there, which means that it should represent this amount of 225 correctly. Now we can move towards another information. On 5 June 2020, Sergio received a letter from the bank that had been delayed in the post. So this is on 5 June. 
Uh, the letter stated that on 29 May 2020, bank charges of 90 and bank interest of 120 had been debited to his account. And an amount of 360 had been received electronically from Alvaro, a credit customer. Okay. And these were the transactions in our bank account, which we did not know until 5 June 2020, which means that even though these transactions had already been recorded uh, at the end of the month of May in our bank statement, we only came to know about it on the date of 5 June 2020, which means that we have not been able to adjust these transactions in our cash book balance at the end of the month for May. Right. So these transactions should be reversed in order to show the correct balance in our cash book. If we're talking about bank charges and bank interest, those uh, are our outflows, right? Because bank charges, that is the amount that the bank deducts from our bank balance and the bank interest as well. And we need to reverse it. So if it were an outflow, now we need to add it as an inflow in our cash book because we had not yet recorded these transactions. But our opening balance in the bank statement, which we wrote above, 12,350, already adjusted that uh, transactions, right? But our cash book did not represent it. So we're just going to reverse it to show that the cash book had no idea about uh, the transactions relating to bank charges and bank interest. Let's write it down. So we're just going to add the bank charges as well as bank interest. That's bank charges of 90 and bank interest of 120. Then we were given another amount as well. An amount of 360 had been received electronically from Alvaro. So receipt is always an addition to our bank statement, right? But since we are reversing it, we would now need to subtract this amount of 360 in our bank reconciliation statement in order to show our correct uh, cash book balance at the date of 31st May 2020. So let's just subtract this amount of 360. We can write it under the heading of receipt from Alvaro. And that's the amount of 360, but we're going to deduct it. So I'm just going to write it down in a bracket. We concluded all of the additional information. So now we can figure out the balance as per the cash book. So balance per cash book. And in order to figure out this balance, we just need to add all of these amounts. So that's going to be minus 12,350 plus 3,381 minus 2,148 plus 225 plus 90 plus 120 minus 360, which results in our balance per cash book to be negative 11,042. Let's write it down. Since it's a negative balance, I'm just going to write it down in a bracket. All right, this concludes the second part of this question. We can now move towards the third one. We're given additional information. Sergio's bank manager has asked Sergio to repay the overdraft within the next three months. And Sergio has identified two possible options. So the first one is Miguel. A close friend would provide Sergio with a loan of 10,000 repayable in five annual installments of 2,500. So every year for the next five years, Sergio would pay 2,500 in order to settle this loan of 10,000. Then option two is that Sergio could take a seven-year bank loan from another bank for 16,000 and this bank would require annual interest of 1,000 and security for the loan. Now we need to explain the benefits and drawbacks to Sergio of each option. And firstly, we'll be talking about option one. So this is a loan from a close friend, right? Which means that no security is required, which would act as a benefit for Sergio. Let's write it down. No security or collateral required. And he is going to repay this loan in annual installments, which means that he does not have to pay any interest factor, which would uh, not reduce his profit, which means that 100% of any future profits will go to Sergio, right? That is a benefit as well. Let's write it down. 100% of any future profits will go to Sergio. Now we need to talk about drawbacks of this option as well. The very first drawback would be that the loan is needed to be repaid in five years, right? And five years is a relatively short period of time to pay the loan, which could act as drawback for Sergio. Let's write it down. 
the loan will need to be repaid. within a relatively short period of time and the second factor that we need to consider is our amount for bank overdraft right we can see that our amount for the bank overdraft is 12350 but according to option 1 he will only be taking out a loan of 10000 which should not cover the repayment of the overdraft that will definitely be a drawback let's write it down the loan would not cover repayment of the overdraft All right, now we need to talk about benefits for option two. In option two, we are taking a seven year bank loan uh, for the amount of 1600, which would require annual interest of thousand and also security for the loan. So the very first benefit here is that our amount of loan is greater than our amount of overdraft, which was 12,350, which means that this loan will clear the overdraft and provide additional working capital as well. Let's write it down. Will clear overdraft and provide additional working capital. And another benefit is that the repayment time now is seven years, which is greater than five years uh, for option one right so since he has a longer time to repay the loan that will definitely act as a benefit let's write it down Sergio has a longer time to repay the loan now we also need to talk about drawbacks for the second option the very first drawback is that Sergio now will have to earn more profit as he needs to pay the interest of 1000 as well, right? Which could deduct the profit. So let's write it down. Sergio now has more pressure to earn profits. And also remember that Sergio requires security for this bank loan according to option two, right? So if he fails to repay the bank loan, then bank will take his assets due to which he could lose his business. That would definitely act as a major drawback. Let's write it down. Sergio could lose his business if he fails to repay. As bank will take his assets all right this concludes the second question for 2023 specimen paper 2 if you found this video useful make sure you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future thank you